safe to be here now. It, was it dangerous before? Yeah. Oh. You heard the last episode, man. Well, the last episode was a little bit more deranged than normal. We are increasing our morb content by 50% today. We've watched 10. We're watching five more. Mm -hmm. And I believe we're going to be attempting to watch all five at once, which will be an interesting experience. We also have a, a new guest to watch horrible Morbius five times at once. Uh, and that is Chase. Say hello. Hello. It's me. I'm here now. Okay, so Chase, uh, have you ever seen Morbius before? No. What do you know about Morbius? He's a vampire. I've read The Sun, uh, Nightmare Sun? Sons of Nightmares? I don't know. It wasn't very good. Mm -hmm. um, which is a comic that features a bunch of other guys and also Morbius. A bunch of other guys, you say? Yeah, like Ghost Rider and stuff. Oh, how I miss other characters. <laughs> I don't. I've got all the characters I could ever need in... Yeah film morbius well that honestly means like i've not mm. any read any morbius comics with you yeah. melon no no not at all okay, so it sounds like you know the most about morbius yeah. out of anyone who's ever watched it disgusting a jack. disgusting thing to happen jack i have a surprise for you oh earlier today i did some research oh no earlier today i didn't cheat so much as i went to go look at something specific in order to come back and tell you about it and it's that Morbius appears to checkmate the White King mm -hmm. with... I actually have no idea how he does it because he appears to be advancing the white pieces, putting black on the defense, and then just flicks over the White King at the very end. So you can just sort of concede a game of chess at any time. Yeah. So I believe that he was forcing White to concede the game. I don't think there was actually a checkmate involved. Ah, the mastermind strategy of forcing the other player to give up. Well, if you're, if you're playing both sides so that you always come out on top, you mm. can simply do that. Yeah. Is, that an, is that a feature of this movie? Oh, get excited. We have already got like so many of our favorite scenes uh, that we will cheer for and cry at and laugh. Uh, it is an emotional roller coaster, and we're all slightly deranged. Chase, are you, about, you are about to experience uh, an emotional journey the likes of which you, are, you have never before experienced. Yeah, fair enough. I, I Full just, stop. That was the end of the sentence. That's, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess I'm ready to be changed fundamentally as a person. Oh, yeah. But you like this movie, is my understanding. You yes. told me you liked this movie last time I asked you about it. Yes. I, as I watch it more and more, I have become aware as to like how unjustified any of the plot is. But I do still like to watch milo do a funny little dance yeah like at the, that's at justified the, at the same time as the entire thesis of the movie has fallen apart and mm. it has been revealed like the man behind the curtain has been revealed and he's not very good at writing a script yes um at the same time we have grown attached to these goofy little guys and now i am ready to have sex have sex have sex have sex have sex I'm sure that's a reference. Oh, And not boy. just you saying that. No, I said it that way as well, specifically. <laughs> yeah. For a reason. Jack's just excited to finally stop watching Morbius yes. and have some sex. <laughs> I, yeah, I assumed that... <laughs> I assumed that you saying that and, like, making brief eye Welcome contact Welcome to The Bachelor, Chase. Didn't mean we anything. have Jack <laughs> I assume that that didn't mean anything and that it was relevant to the plot, but you know... Real true Moorheads will know. <laughs> Is All it right. wrong that I'm a little proud to not be a Moorhead yet, I guess? We'll, uh, we'll fix we'll that for you. Yeah. We can fix it in post. We can fix it right now. <laughs> I'm, I can turn this off right now. We can go watch Morbius five times at once. Yeah, I guess let's do that. Yeah, all right. We'll see you on the other side, gang. ba 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 da Wow, it's already starting. <laughs> You see what happens in the movie and you start rooting for it and you go, we need Morbius. Yeah, we do. To stop the evil. We need, we need Morbius to stop the evil, that's for sure. Okay, so Chase, um, how would you describe the plot of Morbius? It's one of the movies that's been made, is uh, I'd say my first thought. Mm -hmm. And your second and third thoughts? I'm really distracted because I'm thinking about by far what I would say is the best part of the movie, which is every time he drinks a fucking blood bag like it's a Capri Sun. <laughs> so, well, first of all, I want to congratulate Jack on his excellent synchronization skills because the four Morbii on the TV was synced to like a perfect 4-4 four, four beat. It was, it was magical and musical, I will say, in a way that I don't think we'll be able to capture mm. again. That was your magical and musical talent, Jack. And truly, it, something is added to Morbius when, when it's it sort of rhymes and it ha it flows in this mm. lovely syncopation, as everything is said four times. That said, the emotional like 
impact of Jared Harris dropping his bread four times in perfect <laughs> synchronization. Truly, truly devastating. Dark. Oh, we'll never return. I had to down the rest of my export for that. <laughs> Out of respect? Out of respect. He drops a beer, I drop a beer. He dropped a bread. A bread? It's what is same. a bread but a beer? Yeah, no, a bread... A beer is simply a cylindrical bread. So, so Chase... What, uh, wait, sorry, sorry. I really okay. have to interrogate that. What's a baguette? Long beer. Yep, cool. Anyway, <laughs> a so yard yeah. glass. Uh, do you think watching Morbius four times in rapid succession... Five times. Five times. In, in rapid succession. Added or detracted from your, your Morbius experience? I'm not sure it's a way I'd recommend watching a normal movie. Fuck but, you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. But, but Morbius is not a normal movie. And I think that really this, this adds something to it. What does it add, Chase? Um, <laughs> Melon just got very close to me and whispered, what does it add? This Sorry is for the poison mic, for the fucking this. audience. <laughs> What does it add, Chase? Oh. It adds a lot of confusion and a lot of me me leaning over to Mel and saying, what did he say? Because I can't see the subtitles. Th- this is the first viewing of Morbius where I feel like Merlin and I are subjecting someone <laughs> to it. Like yeah. We had Winslade on a couple of episodes ago and Winslade just got to sort of sit and enjoy it with us because we only watched it three times. Um, <laughs> A normal amount of time to watch Morbius. <laughs> yeah, sure, man. I'm not going to lie to you. That seems infinitely more miserable. <laughs> this was this was miserable in a in a funny way. Yeah, miserable in a short way. <laughs> but like this one feels a lot more like we're poking you with sticks, going react, react, <laughs> morb for us, Chase, morb out. Look at Jared Harris, Chase. Look at Jared Harris. I wish I could morb out. Um, I think that I love that's my favorite like now like I guess trope of the the become a funny cool strong guy type of superhero mm. which is that they all immediately go oh I'm a cool fun strong athletic guy I'm gonna backflip each each Spider-Man does it I think mm. fucking Venom probably does it mm-hmm. Dr. Connors or the lizard guy does it in um the Spider-Man movies mm-hmm. I guess that's just what you do when you're suddenly a cool guy so Melon do a backflip. Melon's not become a cool guy through some sort of scientific atrocity, though. No, I just did one. I just did a backflip. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to edit out you doing a cool backflip and then act like you didn't do one. Fuck! <laughs> That's rough, buddy. <laughs> You're a piece of shit, Jack. <laughs> That's really hard. I'm not going to re-up the lease with you. <laughs> Viewers, tell us after listening to this if you think this has gone off the rails a little bit. <laughs> Do you, can you tell that we are beginning to morb? We're 15 morbs in. Uh, a solid, what, 3% mm-hmm. of our total uh... 500 morbs. Yeah, but it took us four days to get the first 2%, and now only one extra mm-hmm. day to get the third percent. So it is speeding up. Yeah. Okay, pop quiz. Pop quiz. Ooh, pop quiz. Uh, what piece of evidence did Agents Rodriguez and Stroud focus on in the container ship? Four. Uh, I actually know the answer to this. It yeah. is the origami bat yeah, that's that a, that's Dr. Piece Morbius four. made for Dr. Bancroft just in case he died on the operating table and it was his last little like cute gesture to her. And they picked it up and went, hmm, mm. isn't this a hobby of yours? And they show it to him later in an evidence bag in the interview. No, Agent Rodriguez just eats it right there on the boat. <laughs> Mm. Munches it down, evidence bag and all. No, during the movie we talked about somebody making a Morbius quiz for us. And I just wanted to see whether you two were holding on to that piece of trivia. Yeah, no, I didn't did. remember what it was. I just remembered it was number four. Thanks, Chase. That was the answer I was looking for, but uh-huh. Jack knew what it was. So and that's like, what together, happens when you've seen Morbius fourteen more times than I have. Yeah. Well, like in a quiz night, you two have cumulative, cumulatively scored one hundred percent of the answer. Which one of us knows about Morbius sports? We were talking as well about the. Uh, the minor characters. By minor characters, I mean background Yeah, extras background performers. Yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah. We, we personally enjoyed. Mm-hmm. We talked about short guy with bike. Yeah, Chase. Uh, who is your favourite background character? After having only watched Morbius a measly five times. I'm a big fan of, like, couple... I was a big fan of, like, couple in the back corner of the bar. Mm-hmm, where mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. Um, Matt Smith goes to get laid. Um, mm-hmm. And then doesn't. There was like a kind of a couple in the background where there was like 
it kind of felt like these were two extras that knew each other. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. like had maybe hooked up once, but like it hadn't gone well and it was like, mm. it was bad chemistry. Do you want to know a fun fact about this movie, Chase? I sure do. A lot of the background performers in this movie have had sex with each other. Ah, that's interesting. How do you know that? I just do. Are you a background <laughs> actor in Morbius? Yeah. You son of a bitch, you never told me? I saw Jared Leto's dick and I said, mm, don't like that. <laughs> I have to say I hadn't thought of the, the intricate chemistry of the extras, but now that you have mentioned it, I do want to watch <laughs> Morbius at least one more time with that purely in mind. Because, yeah, like, you know... We watch Morbius and just edit Jared Leto out of it. You got, you got, you got short guy with bike. You got those two paramedics who just yeah. leave the blood on the doorstep. Yeah. yeah, you've got Bodega guy who says fuck cops and respects women. Yeah, it's true. We got, yeah, feminist icon Bodega man. Oh, yeah. Um, Headphones guy. Yeah, green headphones guy that I didn't notice at all in any previous viewing. Mm, yeah. But because we had talked about background characters, I noticed his beautiful green headphones. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I like guy that guy that sells Milo a newspaper. Yeah, uh, Vive headset attack guy. Ooh. Mm. Um, guy Many... who's a misogynist on the boat. Guy who's a misogynist on the boat. Lest we forget Jason the goon. Jason! Jason! Yeah, so that's a summary of background characters that stand out. You two can play this game at home. Yeah, play, watch Morbius yourself and then tell us which of the descriptions we have given you match to the people that you see in the movie. See if you can spot them. But you know what? Background performer can't possibly be like understated or underestimated. The bread? Is it the bread? Jared Harris's bread. It brings me to tears every single time. It's an Oscar he drops it on the floor. And to save Milo of all people. <laughs> to save Milo wow. of all people who uses his crutches to beat four bullies to death. Now... <laughs> The number of bullies he beats to death will change based on how many instances are on any individual screen at any one time. Right, yeah, yeah good If point. you were watching the laptop on the table, you would only have seen him beat up one bully. But on the big TV behind it, four, four bullies. Yeah. When we have to watch 31 Morbiuses, he'll be taking out dozens. The power scaling of Morbius really is kind of nonsensical. This, is, this might seem like a really stupid thing to say. I really was expecting more blood for a fucking vampire movie. That is what we, we, Ken's brought it up before, and I brought it up before we started this, that it seems like a movie that was intended to be R rated, mm. but then the editors in post were told, nope, no mm. blood, it has to be like M instead. Because uh, there are a lot of scenes, especially when he's committing violent acts of murder with slashing and gutting, mm. and there is just very little blood. Should something. we? Should we talk about the scene of the time? Absolutely. Yep, so I would say that the next scene that we're due to talk about is almost like an interstitial period of Morbius reacting to the change. He moves from the boat to the lab and explores his powers. This scene really brings into stark contrast for me how weirdly fucking shaped his lab is and how much it doesn't make sense that old Michael Two Crutches Morbius has been like ambling around in yeah. it and using it for science experiments. So like it's a really, really big square room functionally with like a vaulted mm. ceiling and it has kind of like little stations all around it. In the very back you've got, the back corner is where it is a lab like you would expect. Yeah. And you've got the blood freezer and stuff. Next to that is the, the morb containment chamber. Yeah. That doesn't seem to serve any purpose. It doesn't have equipment in there. Mm. It doesn't have PowerPoints in there, like you mentioned yeah. during our viewing. Uh, it seems to be just a place to contain the morbs, and that doesn't seem to be a real normal thing to have in a it hematologist lab. It almost looks like lab. a brick. Like a brig. Like there is yeah. the back wall that is part of the wall of the lab, and then all of the rest, including the ceiling, because it doesn't quite go up to the roof, are just like your panes of glass through which an observation may be pursued. Yeah, it looks like a interrogation room almost but like a more exposed interrogation room and then obviously in the middle of the room you've got the giant bat tube which you know mm. serves the bat tank bat vat which we're calling yeah. it uh, which he's not allowed to have but it is in clear view of anyone that walks past the big open doors to this room yes uh then in the co other corner he's got this really large uh like lounge almost yeah almost like a library set up yeah but the, and the next to that is the actual library yeah. which uh, I feel like you have a couple of thoughts about Yeah, okay, so I have so many thoughts about this fucking library, guys. One, uh, Morbius throws a ball against it, and instead of sounding like books, it sounds like a squash court. And you might not think that books and squash courts have a different sound, but I can tell you they definitely do. Now that I've watched this movie, because Melon mentioned this to me before, and I was like, what the f- what? 
That's a meaningless sentence. And now that I've watched the movie, yeah, no, it does sound like a squash court. Second of all, uh, the library is like several, the whole lab is tall. Se- tall. It's at least two stories, possibly three. Which one doesn't make sense because it's in the middle of a skyscraper. Um, it's in the middle of the Horizon Labs building. And there's a giant ladder attached to the bookshelves. One which is yeah. red, the color of evil. And, like, Michael can't use it because he can't stand on his legs. Does he just crawl his way up there with his hands? It's not very accessible to have floor-to-ceiling yeah. bookshelves with a big library ladder when the, the yeah. scientist whose office this is cannot use that. I like to imagine that Morbius has, like, a secret, like, giant plastic grabby arm that he uses to extract I books. was thinking about one of those, like, uh, long... Like metal sticks with a hook on the end that like retail assistants will mm. use to access clothing hung on high hangers. Also, can I? I want to establish how big this lab is because, like, when we're just talking about this, you don't really get a sense of it. But it takes a full ten seconds for someone to walk from the door to, I would say, almost two meters from the back. Back. And I would say in the other direction, the lab is probably... Bigger. Bigger. So probably, like, at least 30 seconds of power walking from one end of the lab to the other. This is a big fucking office for a guy who doesn't do a lot of moving. To be fair, you make artificial blood. You get the big lab that you want. You get the big lab of your dreams. And it takes me fucking 10 minutes to hobble across it on my crutches. (laughs) Give him a wheelchair when he's in this room. Like, Jesus Christ. Or, like, give him some of those, like, airport, like, travelators that will, like, speed you from one... He doesn't even have somewhere, like, convenient to put his crutches. Yeah. Or, like, you know, like, bars along the wall Mm. so that he can like lean himself yeah, against something pull, yeah. or pull himself out of his seat yeah it's wild it's, it's absolutely yeah it's an accessibility insane. nightmare is i think what we're all agreeing on luckily he morbs and then we don't have to think about that luckily he morbs so this is my deal right because like Mo- morbius is a private scientist like he doesn't work for a hospital he works for a private lab where blood is donated specifically for the purposes of research which means it wasn't going to go into a human per he is not depriving anyone of life that's his blood to just kind of like drink or research or kind of just empty out into the sink as he sees fit. So I one has to wonder what is lost by Morbius drink because he already had to have three blood transfusions a day. Exactly. I think that's the thing that bothers me is it's like if he was already having that much blood a day anyway, what does it matter if he drinks it or if he injects it? Who cares? It's the ethics chase. Human blood bad is the thing. You're right. Original um, sin is when they put the blood in you. Thanks, God. <laughs> what did that mean? What does that mean? What does Ori- any of this mean? Original sin is when they put the blood in you. What's so fucking hard about that? <laughs> it's like you never even went to Sunday school. Chase. It's like you never even watched Morbius. <laughs> when I know you watched it five times. You're right. And I definitely understood it as much as someone who watched it five times in a row. Yeah, and tomorrow we will watch it six, six times. times. Uh, so get excited. Tune in then. Oh, it's really starting. We're really beginning to morb. 